friends, as we come down to the final hours of the Sephora Savings event, I thought at this time I'd like to go through my loves list because as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on this list. So the way I treat my loves list, it's not necessarily just items that I do love. It's new items that have caught my eye or items that people have recommended or I've heard talked about that sound really interesting. I just shove it all on here and eventually I go through it all and sort of declutter things. But I do find that it's very helpful. So we're going to get to it in time. But for example, this Melt Cosmetics palette, as soon as it was available on the site, I stuck it into my loves list and I've been hemming and hawing about it ever since. But I do find that a lot of times when I put things on this list and then revisit it a week, two, three weeks later, a lot of times that like desire to purchase that item has passed and I'm really not interested in it anymore. So it's a nice little like stop gap for me and it sort of forces me to really consider the purchase. And I do find that to be particularly challenging when there's a sale going on. Now, for myself, I am in the rouge category, so I save 20% during these savings events, but I live in Ontario and our sales tax is 13%. So I don't find that it's really a time for me to go completely crazy, but it is a time where if there's certain items that I really wanting to, like been wanting to try, now's a good time to pick it up. So we're going to go through this and I'm going to try to keep it brief because I know there are a lot of items on here. I may add some items to my basket. I'm not sure. We'll see how we go. Uh, I have purchased some stuff during the sale already. So this would just be like final little things to add in. So first up, we have two Bumble and Bumble items. These are both items that I have used before and repurchased before, so I know that I will repurchase these again in the future. I find that this gel oil holds my curl really nicely without making my hair look wet or make it feel crunchy. And then this curl reactivator is really great for the day after I've washed my hair. And even, even two to three days after that, I can, especially if I combine it with some water, I can really revive my curls so that I don't just have to wear a fun bun. So I'm not really in the market to pick them up right now. I think I can hold out until the next sale based on what I have currently in my cupboard. So I'm going to leave them on the list, but I'm not adding them to cart today. This Clinique Easy Liquid Eyeliner. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure why I added it to this loves list because Clinique is carried through Shoppers Drug Mart and I would purchase it through that website. So I have repurchased this espresso brown one two or three times. I've had two of the black ones of this. I wish they'd come out with really fun, funky colors, but I don't know that fun and funky is really Clinique's wheelhouse. Uh, regardless, these are my favorite liquid eyeliners. I will continue to repurchase them, but I won't repurchase them through Sephora because I can just use points and get them with no cash at Shoppers Drug Mart. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that one. And then we've got quite a few products here from Danessa Myricks. Oh, you know what? Every time I do this, it's not doing it properly. There we go. I might have to refresh it each time we go, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. So let's talk about these three Color Fix cream eyeshadows here. I do have a few others of these, and I do find that they have just fantastic lasting power on the eyes. They blend really nicely. These metallic shades are just beautiful. They don't flake off. And we've got some really pretty colors here. So this one is Blossom. Unfortunately, I'd have to just keep continually flipping back and forth if I wanted to see the swatches of these. Uh, so we're just going to do the quick look for this video. This one here is um, in the shade Exposed. So it's really just like a cool toned matte shade. That's the one I'm kind of leaning towards, but I don't really know that I need it at this time because I can get the same effect with one of the Vive eyeshadow wands that I have already. So I might save that for a later date. Um, this one here, Alien, it is really pretty. It's like a duochromatic uh, pigment here, but I have quite a few Cleona multichromes and I do have duochromes in other palettes, so I really don't feel like I need that shade. 
Likewise, oh goodness, I hope it's not going to, yeah, it's going to keep doing this, isn't it? Well, that's annoying. That's okay. We'll get through this. This shade here, I think I can also replicate with other eyeshadows that I have. So I'm going to take that one off, but I am going to keep this shade on here, although I'm not going to be picking it up today. Okay. Then we have some of these chrome flakes. I do have the chrome flake in the shade Moonlight, and it is just beautiful. But these ones do kind of hit along the same notes. I really don't think I would need all of them. Fireball is relatively similar to one of the multi-chrome liquid shadows that I have from Natasha Denona. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that particular shade. And then I have to hunt them all down again. Wow, this is going to be really annoying. I don't like how the Sephora Loves List reacts. Uh, so then we have Hot Lava or Superstar. Superstar, I know that I have a shade very similar to this from Cleona, so I really don't need this one. And then Hot Lava is just so very beautiful. I think this is the one that I'm going to keep on my list because I just can't remove it. I just physically can't make myself do it. But it is out of stock, so I have more time to think about it. Oh, that's an app exclusive. Then why are you on the website? Right. If I can only get you on the app, don't show up on the website. Anyways, moving on from there. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I added this one here, to be honest. This is the liquid eyeliner from Danessa Myricks. I've never tried it. I'd love to hear if anybody has tried it, what your thoughts are on it. How is it for application? Does it flake off? Do you have to go over the line multiple times to build it up? Let me know. Um, but for now, like I said, the Clinique one is my favorite. I don't really see any reason to stray from it unless I heard rave reviews on another liner. So for now, we're removing it. Oh, this is just going to be a pain in the butt. You know what? Let's just mosey on down at the way it's laid out and we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so we've got a liquid highlighter on here. Uh, it's a champagne kind of highlighter. I am getting down to the bottom dregs of the current uh, liquid highlighter that I have. And I do like the look of it. Um, so I want to have one in the arsenal at any rate. So I know I have another liquid highlighter on this list. I'm just going to leave this one on here for now. And then once we've narrowed it down, I'll decide from there. This is an app exclusive and I don't really care all that much about it. I haven't tried anything from Lady Gaga's line. I am curious but I know looking at this that storing an item like this is going to be a pain in my butt and I can't help but think that it's going to feel drying. I could be completely wrong on that. Please feel free if you have tried these, let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but for now, I'm just going to, I don't need that right now. Urban Decay. Uh, I have two of these liners now. I have Freak and I have Mucho Mucho. Um, word of warning, they do stain quite significantly. I did show that with uh, this one here in a recent uh, rapid review video that I did, but the yellow one also stains. I picked that one up subsequent to doing the video with uh, the green one. But I have highlighted this shade here just simply because I think it's really pretty. But again, Urban Decay is at Shoppers Drug Mart, so if I was going to buy it, I would buy it over there. I'm not convinced that I need a light blue liner. I know that I wouldn't use it very often, and I've already picked up two funky kind of shades from this lineup, so uh, I don't feel the need to buy it at this time. I'm going to remove that, close this, and see where we're at. Okay, so this one here, I'm going to put this over into my basket for now. And it's not for me, it's for my daughter. So she recently picked up... What shade did she pick up? It was one of these ones over here. It was called, if I see it, I'll recognize it. Sleek. That's the one that she picked up. She picked it up, gosh, like a week ago, and it's already like down to here <laughs> on the tube. So she is getting massive use out of this. This shade is really pretty on her. In case you're not familiar, my daughter's turning 11 in May, so she's quite young. Um, so these kind of light shades, I have no issues with her wearing that to school. Um, so I'm going to pick up this one and then she has that other shade. So then she has two to choose from. 
These are currently 30% off until the end of the sale. They only start at 16. That puts it right square into um, drugstore pricing as far as I'm concerned. And I know she likes this formula already. Okay, so then next up on my list here, we have a Shine Lipstick Balm from Yves Saint Laurent, YSL. I think it's a really pretty shade. This packaging gets me every time. I don't know that I need to be spending $54 on a lipstick balm, which suggests to me that it's really just a tinted lip balm. And I have those in spades. I've also got several lip oils. And I just, even with 20% off, you take 20% off, then you add 13% on for sales tax, and it takes it pretty much right back to this price point. I just, I don't need it right now. And if I have it just sitting here, it's just going to constantly tempt me. So let's just say goodbye to that one. We've already talked about this, Danessa. So let's move on here. Oh, there's the other one for Aspen. So, okay, this actually works out well because there is one and two liquid highlighters that I've been looking at here. The one from Danessa Myricks is $26 for six milliliters. Twice as much here for 45 you get even more here for 33. So, value wise, one of these makes more sense. Probably the Tarte one, if I'm being perfectly honest, but it also comes with the highest price point. No, this one would have the best value. Sorry, math is not my strong suit. So, for that reason, I'm going to remove the Danessa Myricks. I'm going to remove the Tarte slash. Charlotte Tilbury wannabe. And I'm going to keep the Rare Beauty in here. So I have had, oh, I didn't mean to click on that. Son of a gun. Let's go back. Oh gosh. So <laughs> quick look. Let's press on this one instead. So I had Mesmerize and it's too, it's a little too strongly pigmented for my personal liking. Um, I think a true gold would be a little bit too harshly yellow. The champagne I think would look really beautiful, especially if I apply it underneath foundation. So I'm going to keep that shade on there, but I don't know that I need it right now. I don't know that I need it right now. So we're just going to leave it. I'm not going to add it to my basket at this time. The Rare Beauty brushes are actually fantastic. So I already have one of these foundation brushes. I really enjoy it tempted to pick up a backup although if I'm just not lazy and I wash my brushes I really don't need a backup so let's stop tempting myself with this I'm going to remove it but if you are in the market for a concealer brush or a foundation brush I really recommend these I picked up earlier in the sale the uh, blush brush that she offers I haven't used it yet but I really like that it's kind of got like a beveled edge to it and it looks like it's got like duo fibers. And I think that's going to work really well with her liquid blushes. So I'm going to remove this for now, but I really like those brushes. So as I was saying, when this first hit the website, I added it over here. And I have spent an inordinate amount of time looking at this palette and then looking at swatches and looking at the palette and then looking at the swatches. And I'm just not convinced that I need this palette. You know, a year ago, two years ago, I would have picked it up, absolutely no hesitation, the minute it hit the website so that I could get a review up. But ultimately at the end of the day, right now I'm buying makeup that I want and that I want to use, not just a means to an end to have content and to put up a review. So when I really look at this, although I think it's nice, like I, I I really like the red. I love red eyeshadows. I love that you've got like a warmer section over here. You've got a cooler section over here, a good mix of mattes and shimmers. I just, I don't see myself reaching for this except for like one or two times. Like I know I'd love to make a look spotlighting this red shadow here, but I have red shadows in other palettes on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not going to be wearing that red to the office I might wear some of this teal. Um, in fact, I, I would wear this teal. I mean, I have worn teal to the office, but it's certainly not a go-to look for me. And so while I can see some really pretty looks just looking at this palette, I don't need it. 
It's $77. Even with 20% off, it's still expensive. And I don't need to be spending that kind of money on a palette that I'll use a couple of times and then it's just going to sort of get lost in the mix. So we're going to unlove it. So then that takes us to Pat McGrath here, the uh, lip gloss in Flesh Fantasy, which I love. I've been talking about this shade and this lip gloss for it feels like ever at this point. It's just the perfect nude lip gloss. I love the formula. I love the color. It just, I love everything about this lip gloss, except the price, $39. So right now on this website, I mean, I can save 20%, but the Pat McGrath website, as much as I freaking hate shopping through that thing, if I was just to buy a a lip gloss, they go on sale for like 16 bucks all the time, which is going to be way better than 20% off of this. So I wouldn't be in a hurry to get it. So I won't be like sucked into buying, uh, paying for expedited shipping, which FYI pro tip never do because they don't expedite anything. Um, regardless, I, I can see myself buying this from her website directly and not from Sephora. So we're going to remove it. Um, $75. Like, Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, high shine lip formula in vivid cherry red hue. I have so many red lip products. I can totally see why I added this. I love red lip products. I love this packaging. I think the whole thing, like this picture just sucks me in. But then we look at $75 and I am going to unlove it because I don't need that. I do not need that. That's the kind of thing that I know I'd feel buyer's remorse about, uh, and I can spare myself that. So MAC Cosmetics has come out with some new bronzers. I added it here because it was new, um, and I, in looking at it, I'm not going to buy it. I have so many bronzers, and is anybody going to watch a video where I'm like, hey, let's review this one shade of bronzer from MAC? No. So like, it's just going to be like a background product that'll get put into maybe a weekly office makeup thing. But right now I'm working on panning a cream bronzer. So that's going to take for the rest of my life. Uh, and then I have multiple other bronzers. So I really don't need this one. I don't know anything about it. So I'm not missing out on anything. Okay, we've got another liquid highlighter here. This is the newest one from YSL. $45 for 14 mils or 33 for 15 I'm going to go with this one regardless, although I do think that these, um, the products that fall into this like new line through YSL, I really do enjoy them. I've got the skin tint. I have one of the blushes. Then I might have something else in that line as well. I can't remember off the top of my head. So I have no doubt that I would really like this, but it's also like a little squeezy tube, whereas the Rare Beauty is a doe foot. Doe foot's just so much easier to deal with, so... Let's save the 12 bucks and take that one out. We've already talked about Bumble and Bumble. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is Kosas the brand where like everybody says this bronzer smells really gross and then their stuff goes like turns bad really quickly? Is that is that Kosas or am I just like making stuff up? I can't remember. Regardless, my point about bronzer stands. It was new. It caught my eye, but I don't need it. Uh, the Makeup by Mario Plumping Lip Colors. I did pick one of these up earlier during the sale. I picked up this shade here, Hot Pink. Um, I mean, there's all these colors, but once you actually get it on the lips, it's very sheer. It says full coverage. I strongly disagree. You can see the color, but it, I mean, when they say full coverage, I think it's going to look like this. Like my lips are going to be this color, or I guess in this case, this color, and they're most definitely not. So while it's a fine product, I'm not wildly in love with it, and I know I'm not going to pick up any other shades, so I can go ahead and remove them. The uh, Hydro Bounce Serum Foundation here from Say, Kate the Great Beauty was raving about this, and she and I tend to enjoy the same products, so I scurried on over here and added it to my list. But I will be honest and I will say that the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation, currently my top favorite. It gives me like a nice healthy looking glow without being over the top. This has glow in it. I really don't need another glow product because I'm just going to keep 
gravitating towards the Makeup by Mario one because every time I wear it, I fall in love with my skin. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off of here. Uh, but if you're curious, I would check out Kate the Great Beauty. Check out her channel because she probably has a review on it. Sorry, I'm having to sip water because I'm doing a lot of talking. Okay, this is the uh, Ola Hendrickson, or sorry, Hendrickson Banana Bright and Vitamin C Eye Stick. Uh, it's supposed to be a color correcting eye stick that helps to diminish the look of dark circles. I have dark circles for days, but I'm also like just morbidly. Uh, I was going to say morbidly obese. Oh my God, how awful. I used to be, truly, really was. Um, the words I'm trying to say is that I'm like pathologically lazy. And so if I'm adding an extra step in, I know it's not going to ever happen. So this might be a game changer. If it is, let me know. But until I hear that, I don't need it. And I'm going to take it off my list. Right now, I can tell you right now, I'm going to take this uh, Tom Ford one off as well. Again, $75 price point for a liquid lipstick that I don't need. Kosas, again, I have that question about if this is the brand that I'm thinking where their stuff turns really quickly. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. But regardless, I have so many powders in my drawer right now that I do not need anymore, even if it is just a mini. My curiosity is not strong enough to really care that much. Then I've got these two bronzer sticks here from Selena Gomez. One is a bit warmer as an actual bronzer, and then one is a bit cooler for contouring. Um, I don't really contour anymore. Uh, my face changed as I lost over 100 pounds, and I don't find that I really need to contour all that much. I will do it on like days when I'm just enjoying the process of putting on my makeup, and I'm not rushed, or I'm getting ready for like a special event, which happens possibly once a year, maybe twice. Um, so I really don't have any use for this. I do have powder contours. Powder is going to last a lot longer than cream products will. So I'm going to take that out. And as I said, I am trying to pan a Chanel cream bronzer right now. And I think that's going to take me the better part of a year. So I really don't need another cream bronzer to distract me from that one. So I'm going to remove that. Um, this set kind of caught my eye. Just from the products that were in it, it had a full size of the Tower 28 mascara. We will stumble upon that at some point as we go through this list. I am very curious about it, but I do have several unopened mascaras in my drawer right now, and I don't want to be buying it just because I'm curious. I want to wait until I have gotten rid of a few more of the mascaras and just made my way through them. Uh, and then I was just kind of curious about the rest of them, but again, as I'm reviewing it now... I'm glad that some time has passed. I'm glad that I've looked at this image a few times. There's nothing in here that I'm like necessarily on fire about. I will leave the mascara on my list. I think it's $26, so still a lot better than $45, especially when I'm not on fire about the other products. So we're going to go ahead and unlove. Um, okay, so Nars Sheer Glow, Marlena, the OG makeup geek. She was talking about this product in a recent video she did, and it sounded like it would be right up my alley. But again, refer to my comments on Makeup by Mario. I don't need to be spending $60 out of curiosity. And again, NARS is at Shoppers Drug Mart. So if I really did want to buy this, then I would buy it over there, not here. Okay, and then we have all sorts of rare beauty products here. Uh, let's talk about the blush really quickly. I do have... Quite a few of these blushes now. Well, I've got three of them. I have got the shades, or the new ones. I've got Virtue and Worth. I think they're both really beautiful. They're both really easy to use. These are very pigmented. A tiny bit goes the longest way. Uh, the other one that I have, I think it's Joy. I'm pretty sure that's the one I have. And this one can go from zero to like clown really quickly on me. So I would never be effing with some of these like deeper colors. Although having said that, I have the red on my loves list somewhere around here and we will find that and I'm going to be removing it. I kept thinking like, well, I could mix it in with a little bit of foundation and just make a custom blush. But like, again, refer to my comments on me being lazy. I'm never going to do that. So 
If this one gets out of control, imagine what that one would do. So, oh, we don't need to stumble upon it. I can just do it right from here. There we go. This color, Happy, it's a cool toned pink. I think it's really pretty. It is definitely different than the rose shade that I have over here or the strong peach shade that I have here. I think it does bring something different to the table. It's out of stock, so I'm not going to be buying it right now anyways, but I am going to leave it on here because I really do like these blushes, even though they are sort of a, a high risk, high reward situation. Now, these lip oils, I mean, they have gone out of stock. They've restocked and now they are all out of stock again. I do have three of the shades. I had gone and just added the entire lineup here. Um, I think I can definitely whittle it down, though, based on the shades that I have because I have picked up the deepest one here, Affection, which it does not appear this deep at all. If you want to see it in action, it is in day three of my... Um, my week in makeup video episode 14. Uh, so you'll see it applied there. I also picked up honesty, which is in day five. And then the other one that I have is hope. I believe I'm 90% sure that I bought hope. Yes. That was the first one that I picked up before the sale and it is very sheer. Uh, so I feel like I have kind of like a pinky color here. I've got more of a neutral shade here and then one that has a bit of like a rose tone and then everything else just kind of hits in the middle. And while I think they're all going to be beautiful, I don't think that I need to be buying any more because I kind of have the spectrum covered. So until one of those wears out, um, I'm good with what I've got. Although if they did actually, let me double check. If they have, no, they're all sold out. I was going to say, if they have another honesty, I would pick one up for my daughter because she keeps stealing mine. <laughs> I've only had it a few days and she keeps stealing it and it looks beautiful on her. Um, but these have a very nice staining effect. I think they should have just been called lip stains rather than lip oils because they are much more of a stain than an oil. But that's semantics, either here, neither here nor there. The product is lovely. Okay, so Natasha Denona. I've added all these like random lipsticks on here simply because I wanted to see if they would go on sale because a lot of the Natasha Denona items on the Sephora Canada website are on sale because I believe she's withdrawing from the Sephora Canada site uh, and going to Ulta instead. I had mentioned that in a previous video and I had said that that kind of knocks out all the Canadian retailers, which is not correct. I had forgotten about Beautylish. Uh, Beautylish does carry Natasha Denona and it will tell you what the duties are. It, it calculates it and includes it in with the shipping fee that you pay. So at least there's no surprises, but you do still pay duties on it. Um, and depending on the size of your order, you might end up paying some shipping as well. Certainly not nearly as convenient as ordering from Sephora Canada, where I don't have to pay shipping or duties. Um, but the whole point of this is I added these to see if they would go on sale and to pick them up when they are on sale. However, look at the shades. They're all very similar. And I already have Natasha Denona lipsticks in very similar shades. I don't need these. And if I bought them, it would 100% be simply because they are on sale, not because I need them and not even necessarily because I really want them. Because like I said, I already have these lipsticks, different shade names, but basically the same shade. I know I like this formula, but I don't need multiples of the same shades. And again, these have been out for a very long time. I haven't bought them yet. I would just be buying them because they're on sale. All right. So NARS got added in here because they were new and I'm interested in them. Again, I would buy them from Shoppers Drug Mart. You can create a wish list through the Shoppers Drug Mart website, but it is a massive pain in the ass. Their website needs a complete and utter overhaul so I do find sometimes it, it is easier to add things to the Sephora loves list. And then when I'm shopping from Shoppers Drug Mart, I just reference back over here, especially when it comes to shades. And I will say that the um, Sephora website does a much better job at including um, pictures and swatches. I will actually just bring it up just to show you what I mean. If it will load. Oh, my goodness. This computer is like powered by potatoes. I swear it's so slow. Anyways, you see like you have the actual image of what it looks like on the lips. And then you also have this nice comparison over here. 
by contrast, on the Shoppers Drug Mart page, sometimes there's just a picture of this and that's it. And then there's no shade descriptions. So you're kind of shopping blind, uh, which is obviously not ideal. So all that to say, if I can swing down and find them again, there they are. I'm going to leave them on here for now. I think, honestly, I would probably just pick up Mauve Rose instead of Pink Nude. So I'm going to just keep this one just so that I can reference the shade if I do decide to buy this from Shoppers Drug Mart. Uh, the Fenty Skin Melt Off Makeup Melting Cleanser. If you have tried this, please let me know what your thoughts on it were. I recently picked up the Milani um, like makeup cleansing balm. I haven't tried it yet. I am on the last legs of my pharmacy one, and I thought that I would try something new at a lower price point just to see if I can convince myself that I like it as much as the pharmacy one. Uh, so that's what I did. So I really don't need this, but I'm curious just to see what people's uh, reactions to it are and how effective you find that it is. Okay, so this one is 100% the shade that gets me. I love that chartreuse. Am I going to use it very frequently? Probably not. Uh, probably not at all. And obviously I don't know because this is the first time, as far as I'm aware, that Kulfi has put out uh, cream shadows. I have no idea what the lasting power on them is. Uh, I should probably look up some reviews on that, to be honest. I don't... <laughs> I'm going to make... it. A very weird admission here. I don't tend to watch a lot of reviews um, simply because I don't want to be swayed one way or the other and I certainly don't want to be swayed before I do my own review uh, because it does just warm into your head and then you know if somebody's like oh it creased on me I'm going to be specifically looking for creasing and expecting creasing whereas if I just pick it up myself and I apply it then I, I don't come into it with a tainted opinion already. Uh, regardless going back to the main point Am I going to get a ton of use out of it? No, not nearly as much as I would a shade like these guys here, but I have shades like this in cream shadows. Oh, my most recent, uh, my weekend makeup video, I used a lot of like liquid shadows because I haven't been using them. So it seems odd to add them into the mix. And honestly, I'm sure I have a chartreuse shade in my collection somewhere if I ever really needed it. Okay, I've had one of these uh, Shine On Lip Jellies, which I freaking hate. Hate that name. Like, it just makes me grip my teeth. Uh, anyways, I have had it in Cashew, and I used it up completely. I, I think my thing is that I just like orange lipsticks and orange lip products. But this isn't really my favorite gloss. It's not. I really do like the price point on it. And I mean, take 20% off of that and you've got drugstore pricing. But I don't need this. I have so many orange lip products. I really don't need it. I'm just tempted by it. This is one of those things that I wish would just like descend from the heavens. You know, like the tooth fairy comes when you're a kid. I just need like the lip gloss fairy to come and be like, hey, you floss today. I'm going to reward good behavior. But that never happens because being an adult is bullshit. Anyways, let's take that out of here and talk about these guys here from KVD Beauty. What in the hell did I just click on that made it go away? What did I do? I was trying to click on this. There we go. So I swatched these in store and holy shit, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Like Dazzle Stick is the perfect name for them. And all the shades are gorgeous. The one that really caught my eye was this one here because this kind of color with my, like the green in my hazel eyes, it just makes my eyes look so pretty. Uh, it just makes them really green. But swatching it in store versus actually applying this to the lid, two separate things. Um, oh, but they're so beautiful. And this is the other color that I have on there which is also beautiful, but gun to head, I would pick Heat Burst over Flash Storm. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep them both on here, uh, but I'm going to have to think some more on whether or not I actually want to pull the trigger and pick one of these up. These products here from Mizani, is that height? I don't know. Uh, they are basically alternatives to the Brie, the Bumble and Bumble stuff that I had earlier. 
These are fairly new to the Sephora Canada website. I've never heard of this brand before and I haven't tried their products. They are a little bit more cost effective, I believe. Oh, where the hell did Bumble Bubble stuff go here? So the curl reactivator here is $35 for eight and a half ounces. This is $29 for seven ounces. You get 11 ounces of this for 25. You get five ounces for 36. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know what? This though, they're a different product. This is an enhancing cream. This is a gel. Regardless, why would I stray from the ones that I know? I don't want to try new stuff that I may or may not like when I do have the Bumble and Bumble, which I have repeatedly purchased. Okay, now this is where I would love feedback from you guys. Have you tried House Labs? And if so, what is your opinion of them? Because these two blush shades, stunning. So is the price though. Like that, that's a lot of scratch for a blush. And I don't know if I'm ever going to pull the trigger on it. Although during the sale is probably the better time to do it. But these are just gorgeous. And as I was saying with the um, Rare Beauty, I love a red blush. I just love it. The Rare Beauty one, I think I would look like an absolute fool in. This one, because it's powder, I can go in with a very light hand and I would have a much better chance of survival with this. So let me know your thoughts on this. I'm going to leave them on here for now. I think if I was going to buy one, it would be watermelon over the hibiscus, but they're both beautiful. NARS, I can't remember who whose video I was watching, but they talked about Dragon Girl and it was so beautiful. But again, it's a red lip product. I have so many of them. I do not need this one. I'd buy it from shoppers if I was going to buy it. All right, Makeup Forever. Um, powder foundation. Again, this was, I heard somebody talking about it and saying that they really enjoyed it. I can't remember who it was. Uh, there's only, yeah, I don't know. I have had good luck with Makeup Forever products in the past. I've enjoyed pretty much everything that I've tried from them. But I have two powder foundations and they're just not something that I reach for very frequently. I don't dislike them per se, but there's a time and a place. And we're heading into summer and I don't like powder foundations for summer. I don't see myself buying this anytime soon regardless, so I am going to remove it. And then these, please tell me, are they good? Are they bad? Do we care? Do we not? Because I think they look beautiful. Like when you actually look at the, especially this one here, the actual pictures of it on the lips. This is just like my kind of shade if it would show up there. Oh, get this out of here. Like this is just a perfect everyday. You could throw this in your purse, just carry it wherever, throw it on, and it's going to go with every makeup look that you're wearing. And same with this one here as well. Um, and then the other one that I have is Drink on my list. But this one, I'm just not 100% convinced that that's not going to bleed outside the lines. Like it looks like it could get messy with that. So I'm going to go back and find them again. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Where are you? Oh, I gotta click more. There they are. So this one. I feel like it could bleed. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to leave this shade on here, but I would love feedback from you what your thoughts on these products are. Okay, so then we're moving on to a fragrance. Uh, obviously not picking it up during the sale because it is out of stock. It goes out of stock really frequently. They can't seem to keep this one in store, and I don't blame them. I couldn't begin to tell you what it actually smells like, but I did have a um, sample of it and freaking loved it. Uh, loved it enough that I added it to this list and it's been on here for quite some time. And the reason it's been on here for quite some time is because I don't need any more fragrances right now. I just picked up a full size of the Versace Dylan Turquoise, so I'm good. I've got a million. I'm going to leave it on the loves list though because I really did like it and this is a smaller version, and it's a spray. I do not like rollerballs. I will never buy another rollerball, regardless of how much I like the fragrance, but a travel spray, 100%. So I'm going to leave that on there, but I keep hoping that Floral Street will come to Shoppers Drug Mart because that's where I typically buy my fragrance because I just use points for it and just don't pay out of pocket. Okay, 
We've got another foundation on here. Uh, my screen is no longer scrolling for some reason. Oh, I guess because it thinks we've hit the bottom. Except I know there's another product that's not there. Uh, regardless, the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. I have heard nothing but good things about this. But again, I really, really like the Makeup by Mario. And I would just be buying this basically just to confirm to myself that other people are right. Like, there's no reason for me to buy this. I have a drawer full of foundation. Maybe once I get through some more, maybe then I'll come back and revisit it. But for now, I'm just going to remove it off here because I don't see myself buying it anytime soon. And I have to figure out why my screen is frozen. I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm sorry if there was a weird delay there. Uh, this is my first time using this program for screen recording. And I've got it all sorted out. We're good. These are the last three items here. So the Tower 28 mascara. Um, I'm very curious about this. I have heard nothing but good things about it. I definitely want to try it. As I said when I was talking about that Sephora favorite set, I'm going to leave it on the list, but I won't be purchasing it even during this sale. Likewise, the Huda Beauty Mini Easy Bake Setting Powder. I really like this powder, particularly in the shade Pound Cake for setting under my eyes, but I am currently working on an under eye setting powder as part of my project pan. And again, I just don't need the distraction right now. I am going to leave it on this list because I do like this a little bit better than the Laura Mercier one that I'm working on. And it has a better price point, even though it is a mini. Um, but I'm not going to be buying it right now. I would buy it again down the road. And then if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you know just how much I love this highlighter from Jouer, the shade Citrine. It is just, if I could only keep one highlighter, this is the highlighter that I would keep. And that's a hard thing to say because I also have Cookie from Benefit and that is right up there as well. Like it's a very, very close second. Um, but I just, this one just looks like it's coming from inside your skin. It just, oh, it's magic. But I do have it in a face palette. I have hit pan on that one, but I still have a ton of highlighter left to go through. Once that is down to like the final dregs, then I'm going to pick this one up. Uh, but I just don't see the point in having a backup, even if I can get it on sale now. I probably have enough highlighter and certainly, you know what, I certainly have enough highlighter, even if it's not the Jouer one. I have others in my drawer to get me through to the next savings event and then I can pick it up at that point. So there we go. We have made quite the dent on this loves list. This is all that is left at this point. Uh, and this one has been added to the cart so I can actually remove it from here. My daughter already has this shade. She's just made a very good dent in it. And it's out of stock anyways, so we're going to take that out. But there we go. That is much more respectable, much less overwhelming, much more manageable. So thank you for taking the time to watch me declutter. Again, for any of the products that I have removed, and particularly any of the products that I have kept in the basket, I would love to hear your feedback on them. If you have used them, positive, negative, doesn't matter, let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you in my next video. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.